Welcome back to Get Well Soon, the Red Pill content of Willie F, a.k.a. Moriarty, where the mindset is you either die a villain or you live long enough to see yourself become a simp. Today's episode is going to be sponsored by a bunch of eye rolls. I know it. Like, I know it. I mean, female supremacy? Yeah, I understand. You don't believe in female supremacy? Cool. I'm not really here to argue female supremacy as some sort of myth. I'm just going to let you know in a very short message that there are many reasons to believe female supremacy is a real thing. I was scrolling through one of my YouTube content creators, uh, one of my favorite YouTube content creators comment section, and I came across a, a comment. <laughs> and it reads... My mother was a bit of a feminist, born in the, in the early 40s. She was raised by authoritarian parents. She was vulnerable to the seduction of feminist rhetoric. She told my brother and I about how important it was to place women on a pedestal and treat them like ladies. As a result, we made all the predictable mistakes naive gentlemen make. And the women in our lives treated us like doormats, took the kids, money, and fled. Regrettably. My brainwashing was the deepest and I continued to fall prey to female manipulation for decades until I finally developed the level of resentment which exceeded my ignorance and sex drive. I think it's going to be the responsibility for men to look out for the young men out there. To spread the word so they won't make the same painful, expensive, embarrassing mistakes. Bros before hoes. Never trust or believe women. As I was reading this comment, I realized something that I've realized a long time ago. No matter how we view women from a from a aspect of from a perspective of, you know, dang, it seems like females are pretty toxic towards each other in all female environments. Dang, females are real catty towards each other. Dang, females are always competing with each other. You could say all those things, but in the in all with all that being said, Females will always watch out for each other. Females will always make sure that society as a whole has their best interest at heart. And they are very good at doing that. They do that by always connecting back to the female hive mind. The female hive mind is responsible for making sure female supremacy is alive and well. And that's how I see it. When I hear a guy talking about how his mother participated in the brainwashing of him and his brothers, that is everything I need to know. And that's every that's all the proof that I need to keep women at arm's length. And you have to understand something about me. I'm always going to use women and female interchangeable, no matter how disrespectful or vulgar women think it is. Because when it's all said and done, females will be females, women are females, whatever. But to get back to the point, there is no other species on this planet that will always bend over backwards for women and in that same breath say the patriarchy, the patriarchy. The patriarchy that I know of, well, white supremacy as most people will probably see it, is full of a bunch of beta soy field cucks. I mean, let's be honest here. We live, as an American, we live in a society that once sent our men to war sent our men into coal mines, they continue to send them on oil rigs, continue to send them into the most dangerous environments, all for the benefit of females. We tell our young boys at a young age that, hey, do this, do that, you get the woman. Do this, you do that, you... Come on. All us males have heard it. All us males have grown up in a world where we have honestly all the time have had to cater to the female need. A lot of the things that we did in classrooms growing up that males wanted to do, oh, we couldn't do that because guess what? It's female's presence. Can't do that because so-and-so is around. You don't want to do that because this and that. Oh, you're getting too rough because this and that. We have always, as men in this society, had to compromise or sacrifice who we are in the mindset of think about the women around. 
Think about the females. Everybody knows about the famous quote from the Titanic. Females, the women, and the children first. No. That is something that I do not believe in personally, and I stopped believing in this years ago because I realized that female supremacy had me brainwashed. But then eventually I took the red pill and I woke up and I realized, you know what? If you want to talk about an egalitarian society, you want to talk about equality, then guess what? You are going to bring in your fair share. You are going to do what it takes in order to make me believe that you are an equal. If I don't truly believe that you are an equal, I will not entertain you any longer. But there are not a lot of men out there that think like that. In all honesty, I would say in modern society, it's probably less than 5%. The other day I was reading about an article where Cristiano Ronaldo pays his girlfriend $100,000 a month or something like that to live her lavish lifestyle. Am I mad at him? No, do what you want to do. I know hundred k a month ain't nothing but like $100 to him. Whatever. Cool, do what you want. But that doesn't negate the fact that Cristiano Christina, Christina Ronaldo is a simp. He is a simp because of the fact that in that relationship he does not realize that he's the prize. The lavish lifestyle that she wants to live, what did she do to earn it? What did she do to deserve it? Just look good? And let's be honest, she doesn't look that great. She's pretty. I mean, she's pretty. She's attractive. There are plenty of attractive women out there. Once again, for a lack of a better description, I give her a seven or eight. There's nothing amazing about her. Most women nowadays, there is nothing really amazing about them outside of their looks. Let's just be honest. If I'm only looking at a woman, I can't assume that her personality is great. So without me knowing a lot about Christian, Christian, Cristiano Ronaldo, I can't really be mad at him. I'm still going to say he's a simp based on the fact that I don't care if your personality is great. You still don't deserve $500, $1,000 a month just because you exist. That is the type of society that we live in because there is nowhere on this planet where there is a, a woman that is a famous female athlete, one of the top female athletes in the world, and she's paying for a man's lavish lifestyle. And it is being bragged about. Even if that is happening, it is being kept on hush and is swept under the rug because the media would not want that to get out because they don't want to encourage that type of pick me behavior that would probably infest the female community because if we're all being honest right now the, the way it's set up today females have a lot more spending power in this current society to make the lives of men a lot easier but guess what they choose to do they still tend to make our lives hell they still tend to stress us out oh you got these degrees Society made it easier for you to get degrees. Oh, you got these nice, lavish desk jobs. Society made it easier for you to get these nice, lavish desk jobs. Oh, you're getting corporate CEO positions at the top because of something similar to the things that made it easier for uh, for black people to get jobs. It, it slips in my mind what it's called. But nonetheless, because society made it easy for you. That's female supremacy. The patriarch that they bitch about daily made female supremacy what it is today. We don't necessarily live in a, a parent matriarch like they do in the UK where Queen Elizabeth is at the head of the table. But the reality is, when you think about the social hierarchy, the social, the social hierarchy, the top of the social hierarchy is a beautiful woman. Bottom line. Today, your most powerful people when it comes to the social hierarchy the Kim K's, the Beyonce's, the Oprah Winfrey's. To me, that's just the female hive mind. Whatever they're doing, that's what other females are aspiring to do. Those women are career women. What are most women trying to be today? What are most third wave feminists trying to be today? Career women. There are many articles out there that are saying that the nuclear family is going to be a thing of the past in no time because they want to make they make, they want to make way for a feminist world. That means a world that is dominated by career women. Guess what that means? That means more spending power for women, more 
more obligations for men to step their shit up. And it, at the end of the day, it's just more cause for us to bow down to female supremacy. That's all it is. So once again, my man in the comment section that spoke about his mom brainwashing him. Yes, the brainwashing is necessary to, to help mold more simps, more beta males, more guys that are going to be easily extractable for their resources. That is the society that we live in today. People don't want to admit it. These are conversations that people don't want to have. I'm honestly risking my career being on YouTube talking about this stuff. But at the end of the day, it's like, man, I have an understanding of society. I'm, I'm, I have a growing understanding of society. And these are things that I feel confident about saying. On a day-to-day -day basis, I don't disrespect women. I, work, I, I mostly work with women. But the fact of the matter is, and since we live in such a female-centric society, female supremacy being at the top of the, of the, of the uh, pecking order, got to be careful out here. Because if you're disrespecting women, you're risking your job. You're risking your life. And all I'm doing is voice an opinion like most people do. If I was on here bashing males, talking about the white male, white male supremacy, talking about the patriarch, my page would probably have 100,000 views by now. Who knows? But the fact of the matter is, I'm here supporting males and just bringing light to the fact that, yes, as a black male, I can even relate to what a lot of these white males are saying because, in my opinion, people sleep on this fact, but the black community has been a matriarch for a long time. And that's the base, That's just based on the fact that so, much, so many of us grew up in fatherless homes. So all we ever knew was the head of the household being the woman. So we all, all we ever knew was looking up to the female. We know female supremacy well. But the difference between us and white males is white males are more likely to be brainwashed into it because they grew up seeing their simp beta soy field cook dads basically bowing down to their moms and they never really had to, they never really asked, dad, you're CEO of an oil company. How come all mom does all day is shop, sit on her ass, eating bonbons, watching daytime talk shows. And when it's, when it's time to cook, you basically got to persuade her into cooking and things like that. That's the, that is the reality of a lot of white male households that my homeboys told me about. May not be the reality for a lot of them, but the fact of the matter is you had a lot of white male breadwinners still bowing down to their wives. In what, on what level of common sense does that make? I'm the breadwinner. I'm making it possible for us to live a sustainable life in this country. But I'm about to give you all I have in order to make your life easier. If you don't view that as female supremacy, then you are a freaking nut job and you are in denial. And that's how deep the brainwashing goes. I'm going to say it again. In what world does it make sense for me as a male to be to go into back into back breaking situations in order to make the life of a woman easier? While I'm out there slaving, bending over backwards, making it possible for my kids to eat. And then my, my girlfriend or my wife, she may have a part-time job. She, she may, you know, have a, a decent gig where she's bringing in maybe 30% of the income. And I'm talking about back in the forties and the fifties. She might be doing these things, but that's, it's not, it, she doesn't have to. Cause guess what? I'm the breadwinner. I'm expected to protect and provide. So once again, how does that arrangement make sense? How was that arrangement fair? Fast forward to 2020, female supremacy still is the mindset of society. Because even as a man, let's say it's a perfect scenario. I bring in 70K, she brings in 70K. It's time to go to dinner. Who's going to pay for it? Oh, the male. Because why? I have a penis. No, it makes no sense. This is a, people hate to hear this argument, but it's the truth. Why am I using all that I have to make it to where you can be comfortable? Because as I spend my money and you don't spend your money, me, I'm, as I'm dealing with you, I'm dealing with, a, this is a depreciating cause. 
This makes this arrangement makes absolutely no sense. It's almost like the same as Cristiano Ronaldo. I may I may as well be paying you a hundred k a month to be my girlfriend. If I look up the dictionary from the prostitution, I'm pretty sure it's the same damn thing because I'm basically paying you for your service of being in my company. I'd rather die alone. I'm sorry, it doesn't make any sense to me. I love the life that I live right now, and I tell my son this every day. The money I spend on me and him is is wonderful because I know that my child, I don't that's not a depreciating that's not a depreciating asset. I don't, my, my son doesn't owe me anything. I brought him into this world. I need to make his life comfortable. He didn't ask to be here, but this woman, I I probably saw this woman somewhere one day, asked her out on a date, and you know, she came along, and then more than likely, although women won't like to admit it, she she probably was like, okay, so when we gonna, when we gonna link up again? Clearly you're interested. Obviously she probably won't take accountability for being interested, but the fact of the matter is she's interested. So she wants to be here. Once you show me that you want to be here, then guess what? It's time for you to start bringing in your fair share of the resources. If not, I'm not coming back anymore. I don't mind buying a woman a drink. I don't mind taking a woman out for dinner. But it's going to be one or two times. And then after that, I'm going to start looking at her like, hey, what's up? Am I not worth your paycheck that you sit in your air-conditioned cubicle for? I'm just trying to figure out. <laughs> because they know, I know, you know, that when it comes down to it, the female imperative reigns supreme. It is what it is. And, and since I have taken the stance that I have taken, that white knight that you are looking for, I'm sorry, he is not here because I will not bow down to female supremacy. I can't do it. I won't do it. I will not do it. And with that being said, until we meet again.